So, John, uh, what was it like getting the news from Coach yesterday? Uh, it was cool. Um, it was a long night. Um, today's Wednesday. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> lost track of everything. Um, so, yeah, Monday night was just, you know, waiting. Um, whatever was going to happen um, was going to happen. It was meant to be. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited about this year and uh, excited to contribute and help this team win. And could you uh, share with us the journey of, you know, last year was real tough for you, the surgeries and just uh, how hard it was to keep working and, uh, and then to see that work rewarded? Yeah, last year was extremely difficult. Um, just being on injured reserve all year um, kind of messes with your confidence a little bit. Um, you want to be out there and help the team, but you know that it's, it's not time yet. You're not healthy. Um, but no, I'm just really appreciative of uh, the people upstairs for, for knowing the type of player I am, for trusting in that, because a lot of teams, you know, saw, um, you know, two, two broken feet going into the draft process and, and looked the other way. But um, no, it's a blessing to be here. And um, the coaching staff really just taking care of me last year, um, you know, trusting with the, with the medical staff. I'm just getting right, and, and then this training camp, being able to just go do my thing, play free, play loose, and just you know help out and contribute. What do you see your role on the offense as, and, uh, and will you be able to contribute on special teams? Definitely be able to contribute on special teams. Um, as far as role on offense, uh, I like the way Coach Rags talks about being positionless. Um, I'm not going to corner myself into any boxes of saying I'm a blocking tight end, a receiving tight end. Um, I like to say I can do it all, um, and then whatever the coaches ask me, I'm going to go do it. What, I want to circle back to uh, waiting and getting that phone call. So what was it when you finally got the phone call that you made? Like, What was your emotions like? Where were you? Who was with you? That kind of stuff. Yeah, so I was at my mom and dad's house. Um, it's not a phone call. It's it's a, uh, a text, and you kinda, you're kind of you just waiting, obviously, and have the ringer on high, you know, checking your connection, making sure it's – it's all good, but um, you know, I got the text from Coach Art, um, and we had workouts yesterday. Um, just come in for workouts, and and you're good to go. So, uh, just a, a sigh of, I guess, relief. Um, but I was confident. You know, I know the type of player I am. I have a certain view of myself as a player, um, and I don't really, you know, let other people's opinions dictate like how I play, how I, what I do out there on the field. Um, so I was confident going into it. For those of us that don't know, is it like the, the process, is it like everyone at the same time gets a text, or is it like throughout the day you're finding out guys make the team, or you like scratch and like, okay, there's only so many spots left, or how's it work? Um, I think it, so I don't, I, I don't know. Um, I think it's separate individual texts, but I don't know if Coach Art has a, you know, a blast where he can just, you know, blast it out to, to, to 53. Um, but I, it's individual text. Um, and then from there you come in and, and it's a hard day because you see guys you spent so, many, so much time with um, and, and it's, it's hard. You, you see um, just a, a lot of like, a lot of emotion throughout the day, uh, dark day and, and people in and out and it's people's jobs, livelihoods. Um, and, and I don't take that for granted. It's a blessing to be here. John, you talk about kind of knowing the, the player that you are. How, how would you describe that? Uh, I would say um, big time blocker, big time receiver. I'm not going to corner myself, like I said. I'm not going to corner myself into either box. Um, and I just like to go out there every day, um, take it one day at a time. And, 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 you know, that's the type of player I am. Is there something you were focused on throughout this training camp, um, whether it was a technique or maybe just more of like a broader mantra uh, that you were kind of focused on day in, day out? Uh, maybe the receiving game. Um, because just obviously coming off the injury last year, um, you're getting your strength back, you're getting your speed back. And that's what I really worked on this off season, just getting as fast as possible in and out of breaks, um, explosion off the line. And I think the speed work that I did um, with some trainers um, over in Atlanta, um, I think it helped me quite a bit. Um, you know, I think it, and then it translates in the blocking game, you know, uh, on the snap, bursting off the line, like getting into your blocks early, things like that. Where do you feel like you've grown the most with getting back on the field and going through training camp? Can you repeat that? Sorry. Where do you feel like you've grown the most with getting back on the field and through training camp? I would say confidence. Um, just going out there, 
playing free, playing loose. Uh, last year, just having those injuries hanging over my head, knowing that that's not the player I am or was, um, and then just now being healthy, uh, my confidence has has shot up quite a bit. Um, and I'm and I'm not thinking on the field. I'm just going out there and playing, playing loose, playing free, um, whether it's receiving, blocking, you name it, special teams. Um, and then I, I'm able to just go play. I saw you, you and Matt Collins messing around a little bit out there. It seems like everybody just kind of gets along, and it's a good environment to be around. How would you describe being on this offense so far? Yeah, it's a blast, uh, especially with Mac. Are you talking about today with Mac? Yeah. yeah so <laughs> we were doing a drill, and you know, it was an explosion off the line, and whoever touches the bag first. And um, I thought I won. He thought he won. Okay. Um, but no. Did you guys settle that? Who won? Uh, he knows I won. But um, <laughs> he's not here to repeat it. <laughs> exactly. Uh, no, it, it's a blast with the guys on this offense. Um, a lot of different personalities. Um, and I think that's what makes it fun. Um, a lot of comedians, and like you said, Mac, he's a comedian. Um, you know, he brings a, a little spark every every single day, uh, and, and that's really cool to have. When you talk about playing positionless football, I know obviously at Georgia you're pegged as a tight end in college, but where did you kind of see yourself in this positionless role? Um, I would say, like, obviously the YNF specifically, but – in terms of where we can put the Y and F, um, we can split them out as a single. We can, you know, line up three by one and, and run a swing pass to to B or, or Tyler, or any of the running backs. Um, and uh, that's what I think the cool thing is: all the motions, all the all the different things that we do. Um, that that's what makes makes us go. What does it mean to see Schaefer make the practice squad? At least to still have him, you know, on the, the premises. Yeah, um, I was I was excited for him um, just to have him here. Um, that's a blessing. You know, we talk every single day what we can do better with. You know, I have a great relationship with Shave. Uh, he's a great guy, obviously one of my best friends on the team. Um, and he's doing great, getting better each and every day. Had a great camp, so it's good to have him here. This weekend, you guys have like a free weekend. Uh, so you guys, uh, any plans to go to the Georgia game? What are you going to do? How are you going to spend it? Yeah, that's a uh, funny topic of conversation because um, – I guess if you're pictured um, like at the Georgia game or like uh, I guess for for DeMarco at the Bama game or Zach at the Ohio State game, you kind of get some flack from the team, um, I, I, acting like you're the big man on campus, that type of thing. Um, so no, I'm not going. <laughs> uh, that's not specifically why, but I'm just, it was a long camp, I'm going to get some sleep. Um, I, no, I don't think I'm going, I'm just going to uh, take it take it slow. You might get um, it's called the news. So like in a, in a team meeting, um, just like just like this, you'll, you'll get you'll have a picture of yourself, and Coach Hart will say like check out this guy. Um, <laughs> so you, you always try to stay out, stay away from the news, um, and, and that's kind of how it goes. Did you know Chris was such a big Bulldogs fan, and how he became a Bulldogs fan? Chris. He's a Georgia fan? Yeah. Yeah. Are you being serious? No. I didn't I'm know. I'm serious. He, I mean, he's a Boston fan, but then he said he, he's going to watch Georgia, too. So last year, he walked into the bar, uh -huh. saw the game was on, sat with them the whole time for the national championship. Yeah. He didn't bark, but he's, like, a huge – I did not Not know. huge, but, like, he likes watching Georgia. Yeah. I, I mean, we kind of go back and forth because he's a Boston fan, and I'm obviously a Braves fan. And the Braves are killing it this year, so I, I like to stay in his ear about that. But I'm going to um, obviously mention Georgia because – I can see they're going to have successes here. So. John, since you're up there, I just want to ask you about your friend Stetson. Obviously, you have your own things to focus on during preseason, but he's had a good preseason with the Rams so far. How happy are you for him? I'm pumped. Um, you know, he's such a great guy. He's one of my best friends. Been with him forever, lived with him four years. Um, and uh, he's out in L.A. doing his thing. Uh, he had, uh, we had three preseason games. He did well in all of them. and. Um, he did mention to me that he's coming back here this weekend, um, so I might see him. Um, but no, uh, he, he's great. You know, I text him, um, FaceTimes here and there, checking in through camp, and um, he's excited about you know what's going on over there in Los Angeles. So I'm happy for him. You mentioned that you were feeling confident yesterday, but I imagine it was a pretty nerve-wracking day. How did you sort of work through that? Yeah, I think uh, it's kind of taking it in stride, whatever. Um, is meant to be will be. Um, 
So if if it, if it wasn't meant to be on the 53 with this team, um, there's 31 other teams out there, and, and if it's not there, then it's a practice squad, and, and things like that. So you kind of you kind of um, work through all the different scenarios, and you know control what you can control. Um, I felt like I put forth a good camp out here and in the games, um, in the two games I played. So obviously, like I said, I was confident, but um, you know it's a business, and and you know things go how they go. So. Um, just controlling what you can control, and that's what I try to do every single day. Anything else? John, is there a point, maybe a training camp for Miami during the game? You look around and you go, I, I not only feel good, but I belong here. You know what I mean? Where your confidence level and you, you, you're not worried about the injuries anymore. You're just playing football and you're, you're good at what you do. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a great question. I think that kind of went back to, for me, that went back to OTAs. Um, when we were running around doing seven on, um, I felt like I was, you know, catching balls, making plays. It didn't hurt. And, and felt good. And, um, and obviously, I was training the January through April, whatever it was. Um, and I think that kind of allowed for the success in the OTAs. And, and help carry over into training camp. But yeah, I think it went back to OTAs. I started making plays and and I kind of said to myself, well, I can I can really do this thing. I can help contribute to this team, help this team succeed. Um, and that gave me confidence and kind of springboarded into training camp and so on. Um, so yeah. Is there, I'm sorry, go ahead. Is there a part of uh, an NFL tight end like a Gronk, for example, if you're very similar in size? Maybe you don't drink as much as he does, but you know, we want to get the same results out of your game in terms of being able to go down the middle of the field and uh, turn a, a five-yard post route into a four-yard game. Is that one of the assets that you bring? Yeah, I would say so. Um, I've always loved watching Gronk play. Uh, the way he, you know, he's a big guy, he's 6'7", 260, uh, and he plays big. He, he doesn't need to try to be cute about it. He just plays big, runs through people. Uh, and that's what I've tried to do, just be physical every time, whether I'm pressed, whether I have Troy on me, um, one of the corners on me, AJ, um, Jeff, it doesn't matter. Just be physical. Um, big guys play big. That's what um, th that was said back in college and then translates here too. So that's what I try to do. Was there ever a point during your recovery process, just from the two surgeries, that you thought, like, I don't know, maybe I will, like, it's going to be so hard to get back to this point. Like, to be here now, like, do you really, like, appreciate how hard it was like, to get here? Yeah, when I first started running, um, I felt so slow. Um, and I was like, gosh, um, this is going to take a second. And I was already here. Um, so going through training camp injured um, was a difficult process because I didn't know what was going to happen last um, August, uh, uh, like last August. Uh, so yeah, you kind of ride the you know emotions. Um, you try not to, but but that happens sometimes. And um, like I said, you you try to you know get back to like where where I was, and, and it takes time and, and trusting in the process that they laid out, the people upstairs, and then the medical staff, and trusting in their plan. And then um, eventually, you, like confidence starts to come back, and you start to know the player that you are again. And uh, could you discuss Coach Peel's role in helping you? Uh, get to this point? Yeah, he's been great. Um, you know, uh, we're with him every day in the tight end room, and he's going over the routes, uh, schemes, um, kind of using his knowledge where he played 10 years in the league to to um, talk about what me, Kyle, Johnu, Parker, um, Pro, talk whoever's whoever's in, using his knowledge, his experience, um, which I think is very valuable, and. Um, you know, how it can translate on the field. And a bonus question, uh, BT Martin's nickname. I had to look it up. Uh, Skyhawks. Skyhawks? Oh, yeah. That was my guess. Never going to guess that one. <laughs> I, I, I didn't know where Martin was. It's west of Nashville. Real quick, real interesting for me, just your family. You said you were at home. Sure, with high school and success you had there, getting a scholarship to Georgia, all the success there, you have a lot of family interaction, and football's been a part of your mom and dad's life. Tell, tell us a little bit more of what that means to you. Yeah, it's a, it's a blessing to be here in Atlanta, like I've said, um, and especially with my mom and dad here. 
um, they're my, my rocks, rocks plural, but um, my best friends. Um, I talk to them or see them in some capacity every day, every other day. Uh, it's been great. Um, they're, they've been at everything since I was little. Um, Marist through UGA, UGA when I wasn't playing, when I was redshirting, they were there cheering me on. I'm talking to them after the game. Uh, and then last year, they were at the games when I was standing there in, in a shirt and shorts. Um, and, and they're always there for me, and I'm forever appreciative of that. And I'm just trying to use my opportunity every day to make them proud, know that their sacrifices were well worth it. So, um, And then also my, my four sisters, um, one's here, and then uh, three others, two in New York, one in California. But they always find their way back here um, to be at my games and cheer me on, which is, which is a blessing. Does it take a request crazy for the home game? That's a, yes, yes. More expensive than a high school. It gets it gets a little bit expensive, but <laughs> no, it's it's worth it.